Rico and I were in fact married twice. Cheers. <laughs> Today's video is all about mine and Rico's wedding but before I get on to that I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already whilst you're there you can press my bell which will notify you every time I upload a video and a thumbs up is very much appreciated. First of all can I just say how surprised I am that you all enjoyed the video on how Rico and I met which I will link below because I was like really am I gonna, what am I going to talk about but you all really really enjoyed that and have asked for a part two so my part two will be about the proposal and our wedding basically I don't know if this is going to be of any interest but I'll try and make it interesting for you before I talk about the wedding, the accent, a lot of people asked about my accent and how you were all surprised that I was born in London yet I have a Scottish accent. So some of you even said a strong Scottish accent, which I don't know if I do have a strong Scottish accent, but anyway, whatever my accent is, it is. So I was born in London, yes, but I'd left London when I was 17. I have now been up here It'll be 39 years in June. So I've been up here a lot longer. I've been listening to the, the Scottish accent a lot longer. I don't know if I went back to London, if that accent would come back, because that was another question um, that I got asked. Could I speak in an English accent? You know, I'm not very good at um, mimicking accents. This is my accent. This is the way I speak. So... I don't know. I think it would sound very, very silly if I tried to speak in an English accent. I do think maybe sometimes words come out and they sound more English than they do Scottish. But I've also been asked up here by Scottish people what my accent is. So obviously Scottish people can pick up a difference in my accent. But there's probably a bit of a, a Greek accent there. Although I've never lived in Cyprus. Um, the Greek Londoners seem to have a, a twang, if you know, you know, if you know, you know. Anyway, that's accents aside. This is my accent. I don't put it on, it's what it is. Let's get on to the proposal. So it wasn't a very romantic proposal. Rico and I were out one night and it was just Rico and I having a conversation, just chatting chatting about marriage what we thought about marriage you know it was just having a conversation and the conversation turned to a proposal basically went along the lines of well what do you think should we get married was really what Rico said to me so there wasn't at that time a ring involved or anything like that he just it was a conversation that turned into a proposal. So that's as romantic as it got. No, there was no one knee or anything like that. It was a conversation that turned into a proposal. I think I've said that more than once, haven't I? Yeah. So that was it, basically. So he proposed. So then we came up here with my parents for New Year when we were going to have like a proper engagement. I was going to choose my own engagement ring, so Rico took me out, I chose my ring, he basically took me to a jeweller's, I remember it was, I don't know where this jeweller's was, but to get in, you know, it was a locked door and, you know, they would, I don't know, it was kind of a private place, I don't know where it was. Anyway, so we went to this place and Rico basically said to me, choose your ring. So I chose my ring and this was the one I chose right there. That's my engagement ring, that's my eternity ring, and that's my wedding ring. So that was my engagement ring. And I absolutely loved it. I remember lying in bed at night going, <laughs> I was doing all this with it, and oh, I just really, really loved it. I was, oh, 
it was my engagement ring. Listen, I was 16. I was impressed. So, um, 16 did I say? Was I 16 when I got engaged? Or was I 17? No, I was still 16. I was still 16 when I uh, when I got engaged. So I was still 16. I chose my own ring and Rico's mum and dad had a party in their house and that was our engagement party. And that was Rico and I engaged. That was on New Year's Eve that we got engaged. And then we got married in June. Yeah, not long. So the minute Rico proposed, you know, the wheels were in motion. My mom had put the wheels in motion. She started her planning, basically, which I will get onto. So we got ma so we got engaged New Year's Eve. Five months later, we got married, basically. So I turned 17 in February and in June we got married. So I was 17. So for those of you that asked how old I was when I got married, I was 17. So let's say... Uh, backtrack a bit so we got engaged and then of course mother mother started her planning so first of all um my dad got what we would call now I think it's what we would call now a wedding planner then I remember my dad calling him an agent so he was gonna get the cars the photographer dancing groups or whatever anything that we needed the venue the orchestra blah 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 so he would sort all of that out so my dad had to get an agent to sort all of that out so that was done and there was only what five months to get all of that done so not long but let me tell you a bit about greek weddings before i get on to my wedding so growing up for me greek weddings would mostly be in big halls so big halls would be hired out and um, all the women would get together and make cook the the meals so they would make um, pasticcio, kifteres, dolmades, salads you know it would be a big thing all the women would get together and that's how weddings were when I was growing up and there would be hundreds and hundreds of people and they would all be invited for dinner and they would bring in boxes of whiskey and brandies and beers and that's how weddings were when I when I grew up now as the Greek separate community the Greeks got and um, started building the businesses basically as they got richer as they started making money weddings started to change and weddings started to get more elaborate so basically the more money you had you know the more elaborate the wedding was going to be that's how it was i kind of remember it it was like who could outdo who basically it's how i remember it growing up so that's how weddings were so there wasn't this you know evening guests or and it was everybody came there would be an orchestra and it would be a great big party so that's how i remember weddings growing up okay now fast forward to my wedding so my wedding was in the bloomsbury crest hotel now i can't remember if we had 500 guests or 800 guests but however many it was they were all for a sit down meal in the hotel it was a three course meal and that was it and the whole wedding apart from the drink was paid for by my mum and dad so all the drinks were paid for by um, Rico's mum and dad that's how it was even in the hotel it wasn't like an open bar the the drinks were brought in so Rico's um, mum and dad you know had ordered drinks in London and they were brought into the hotel and the drinks would be placed on the table so there would be bottles of wine brandy whatever put on each of the tables but everything else was paid for by my mum and dad and arranged by my mum and dad basically my mum so the agent was brought in he had to find the cars um, and all of that so 
I sat down with them when they were choosing the cars and I told them what car I wanted but let me just tell you at this point this man I didn't like this man this man was a yes man he was the type that you would go I want this yes no problem we can do this no problem he was that type nothing was a problem okay I don't know what accent that was but anyway you get the idea <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean about accents. <laughs> so um, that was that was the type because when the car turned up to pick me up, it wasn't the car that I wanted. So anyway, we were sat there and I said, right, I want a Rolls Royce and I want a vintage Rolls Royce and blah 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 blah. Yes, no problem. It was a vintage Rolls Royce, but it wasn't as vintage as I wanted it to be. Okay, anyway, so I took a bit of a strop that morning, but we'll get there we'll get there and um so anyway the wedding was organized we my dad chose the bloomsbury crest hotel so he would take us around the venues and my parents my parents not i my parents i they would they would say to me what do you think but did anybody really take any notice of what i thought but anyway so they decided on the bloomsbury crest hotel it was booked and so that was sorted out, the orchestra was sorted out, so then I had to choose my dress, which was another palaver. So my dad said to me, what type of dress, you know, going to choose your dress, what are going to do? And my dad had a lot of contacts. You know, he was a tailor, which incidentally, he made Reiko's morning suit. And it wasn't really the dumb thing when I got married that the groom would wear a morning suit, you know, the tails and all that. But that was my picture. That's what I wanted my groom to wear. So that's what my dad made for Rico to wear. So he wore tails. And back to my dress. So my dad had a lot of contacts, you know, in the um, fashion industry, in the dress making, you know, a lot of the factory owners, my dad would kind of make their suits for them. So he took me to one of them and we sat down to discuss my dress. Now, what I wanted was, you know, the very tight Marilyn Monroe fish tail type of dress, but it wasn't the, the, fashionable type of dress at that time it was when Lady Diana got married and it was the bigger the better you know the lace the puffy sleeves and all of that we all know what Lady Diana's dress was like so that was the fashion so we sat down we discussed what I wanted and my dad and, and the designer there was looking at me and they were kind of it's not going to work and this this dress is not going to work how are you going to dance in it how are people going to pin money on your dress yeah pin money on my dress da -da 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 -da. it's not the end thing you need something bigger you need this you need that da -da -da -da. and I was like <sighs> nobody was listening to me so we went home and my dad says right okay we'll discuss it da -da -da -da. meanwhile go out to boutiques see some dresses and get some ideas and maybe you'll change your mind so I went out with my mum and basically walked into a, a boutique and got my dress which incidentally is still in cyprus and still fits me because i've tried it on and um, so it went to cyprus with my mum when she moved from london to um cyprus so that's why my dress is in cyprus and that's basically i just i was like i can't be bothered with all this and i put on a dress listen i was 16 years old it'd be very very hard for me to wear a wedding dress and it wouldn't look nice on me although in saying that when i look back at my wedding photographs i'm like why did i let them do this to me why 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 so i was also told so you all saw what my hairstyle was like and um, the pictures i put in that video were just after rico and i got married but that was my hairstyle when Rico and I first met, that's what my hair was like, it was short and the very Lady Diana type of haircut. That was, you know, that was myself. But then when the wedding came up, I was told to grow my hair, the hairdresser thought it would be best to grow my hair because the veil and all of that would hold into my hair much better. So I started growing out my style, so it was just kind of growing out. Then at the time, it was very fashionable to get your hair permed. So not only did I start growing out this style, I also then went and got it permed. Why do we do these things? And my hairstyle was a very, very, oh, they just kind of turned it up at the back and tucked in the veil and it, oh. And then it was just this curly bit in the front and anyway. Okay, so that was what 
my hair was like and this is why I look like that in my pictures but seeing saying all of that I remember on the day thinking I looked lovely <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I look back now and I go, why did I do that? Why, why, why did I do that? But on the day, I thought I looked lovely. My makeup, I did myself, basically. I didn't, I just bought myself some makeup and it was very natural looking. My makeup, I wasn't made up. And yeah, so that was my makeup. I did it myself. My dress, walked into a boutique, bought my dress. But I did say right at the beginning of the video that Rico and I had to get married twice. And we did. Because um, our weddings in the Greek Orthodox Church at the time weren't recognised. So we had to have a registry office, which we did on the Friday. So Friday the 18th of June, Rico and I got registered. To me, that was just something I had to do. I didn't see that as my wedding. I basically bought myself a white suit, wore a white suit, put on a blouse that I already had, a pair of shoes that I already had. It was something that I had to do. That's how I saw my registry wedding. And by the way, to get registered, I because I was only 16 when we went to get the papers and all that, and I was only going to be 17 um, when we got married, I, my dad had to sign that it was okay that he gave me permission to get married. That's how young I was. <laughs> he actually had to sign the papers. My dad had to sign my papers to get married. Okay, that goes to show how young I was. So on the Friday, we had a registry office. No party or anything. It was just something that had to get done, basically. Went in and I remember in the registry office getting the giggles. I you know when we we're doing our vows and all that i remember i don't know i just remember getting the giggles terrible anyway that was done and dusted and then it was time to look forward to our wedding on the sunday which to me was my my wedding so of course before the actual wedding was all the planning which let me tell you my mum was in her element so anything she got it would be the best it would be the biggest basically she got she chose the biggest cake anybody could ever imagine there was actual doves in my cake so when they were going to cut the cake basically the top tier of the cake had um doves in it which once the cake was opened rick and i would take the doves and we released the doves <laughs> and i say to you <laughs> you know she went all out she went all out listen i was the only one she was gonna do the best she was definitely gonna do the best so the doves we had doves in our in our wedding cake our favors were the best favors i still have my favors in my unit downstairs i'll show them on one of the vlogs because they're downstairs and i don't want to stop filming and bringing them up so yeah every so all the guests had favors and um, the top table had really elaborate favors and um yeah she really they really did the absolute best that they could for me they, they really really did so the morning of the wedding the car arrived and i looked at the window and i said i told you i told you he wasn't listening so i took a wee stroke that morning because it was a white rolls royce turned up but it wasn't the one that i wanted my mum was like does it matter it's just a car it's no big deal do you know my mum's calming me down it's fine like, are, are you gonna go and tell him but my mum's what we're gonna what's what's the point of getting upset now blah 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 so that was really that was it we had a big big wedding everybody that we had sat down for our wedding there was none of this having evening guests or anything like that oh the the dance so when i said about pinning money so when we got married it was very traditional i don't think they do this anymore even in cyprus i think they just hand envelopes to the couple with money so both my boys also kept up with these traditions so when we got married we Rico and I got up to dance and so it was the bride and groom dance and the guests would all come and pin money on the on the bride and groom so you wouldn't give gifts to the bride and groom you know you wouldn't give them crystals and toasters or whatever you give the bride and groom you would just pin money 
onto the onto the bride and groom and that would be the gift that would be a good start for the couple and you know a lot of people would kind of use it for the deposit on the house and so on and so forth so um that's basically my wedding we had an orchestra we had dances that um did the greek dancing which was lovely i have it all on video because we had a videographer again which was quite an elaborate thing at the time but we had a videographer who was the photographer who was the agent <laughs> You know, he was going to make money on my wedding, he was going to make money on it, he was going to do as much as he could. So that was my wedding basically. We stayed in the hotel that night, we then went to Jersey for a honeymoon and then we had like a proper honeymoon where we travelled around Europe and ended up in Cyprus and that's basically our wedding. And here we are now, nearly 39 years later. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the uh, comments down below. Meanwhile, if you would like to see any more videos from me, I'm going to link one here, here. And if you're still not subscribed, just press the A right here. And I'll see you next time. Bye!